Hiya, and welcome back to Where the Demon Lurks, the game that teaches us that we're about to make Vendrake bite the curb. Oh yeah, that's also why I have a little Lucian there. Anyways, let's just hop right in. I am, I'm obsessed with Lucian, I'm obsessed with him. Okay. As your eyes flutter awake, you notice your chest feels heavier than usual. Are my notifications really that dry? Yes! They are. Huh? But also, I kind of like it that way. I also kind of like it that way. Lucian's head rests on top of you, his sleeping face facing yours. You smile as you pat his golden locks. Wait a minute. You're struck with the realization that you can't move without waking him up. So this is what it feels like to be in those kind of anime. See, I would start crying out of pure happiness. It should have been me! Damn it! Should have been me! You chuckle softly as Lucien's drowsy eyes squeeze open. Mm, uh, what? Morning, sleepyhead. He promptly straightens his bed head and stares at you. Morning to you too, Kobu. I trust you slept well. Not as well as you. He's quick to turn away. I was just meditating on something. You roll over on your side, patting your stomach with a mischievous smile. Did my belly make it easier for you to think? He clicks his tongue. That's besides the point. Now please, don't you have your mortal obligations to take care of before we can continue our investigation? Hmm. You reach out beside the mattress to grab your phone and tap away to confirm your timetable. Nah, I've got the night shift today, which means I'm free this afternoon. Well then, I suppose we should begin your special training. Training? Oh, you mean the whole powers thing? I mean, I suppose so. Ping. Lucian's halo appears over his head. Hmm. He grabs it and taps at it like a tablet. Cora at Six Fan wants me to come in a little earlier than planned so she can show me the robes. Does that mean training is off? It's on hold until I'm done with work. I should probably start walking there if I want to make it in time. Hold up, I just realized we don't have our priorities straight. Wait a sec, I just thought of something. If I can open a portal now, why don't I just make one where King is and pull him back here? Lucian purses his lips. Kobu, I realize I shared some of my powers with you, but that's quite a lot of wishful thinking. Well, we won't know until we try. Raise your right hand to op ready to open a portal over your mattress, but Lucian grabs hold of your wrist. Easy now. I understand you're excited, but I'm not fond of taking blind risks. Try opening a portal somewhere safer to understand the current limits of your power. You feel the heat of his hand around yours. It takes a few moments, but the wisdom in his words warms up to you. Okay, let's take it slow. He smiles and lets go of your hand. Let's try a portal behind Six Fan. Should be out of sight. You imagine the destination in your mind, conjuring forth soul energy that courses through your forearm into your fingertips. Let's go, Six Fan! You snap your fingers, opening the portal. Lucian steps forward and pokes his head through for a second before looking at you baffled. That's inside of a movie theater. What movie? He takes another brief look into the portal. God damn it! God damn it, Lucian! Oh my god. <laughs> We're committing a crime. We're committing a crime. Trespassing. Oh my god, I also wish I could do that. It'd be so fucking cool. Takes another brief look into the portal. Something about a teddy bear in very bright pink clothes coming to life in the real world and exploring what it means to be alive. Aww. King and I were supposed to watch that. He loves musicals. Well... No, wait, let me try again. Lucian rolls his eyes, but you ignore him as you snap open another portal. He peers into this one as well, but shakes his head. I think this is a rubbish tip. Crack open another portal again. Nope, that's the inside of a broom closet. Your frustration building, you call forth the final portal, wishing for it to be right this time. The angel blinks, he turns and tells you with a deadpan voice. It's just a cute bottom. <laughs> 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 
Kobu's bottom confirmed. Wait, what? It's just a cute bottom. Damn it. <laughs> I don't understand. This is like Portal 101. I can keep the shape stable, but the location is off. What's wrong with me? Lucian puts a hand on your shoulder and pats you awkwardly. Does he mean bottom as an... I think he means bottom as an ass. Um... He seems to be struggling to find the words to say to you. There, there. That performance was... Less than adequate. But that just means anything from now on is an improvement. Gee, thanks. He pulls his hand away. Look, I'm not going to pretend I understand portal magic. Even the ones I used were turned by Gary, were tuned by Gary to find you. I do know this. You can't give up. No matter how much of a choice or Vendrake will smite us. Oh my god, you're not allowed to update. Stop talking about updates. You're not allowed to update. No. No. Bad laptop. That is a that is a bad laptop. You don't have much of a choice, or Vendrick will smite us. Lucian, you suck at pep talks. You sigh and shake your head. I don't know, it just feels like everything's been reset. I haven't had these issues since I was a newbie learning my powers. Then, go back to the basics. Regretting one's fall from grace has shackled many souls to their despair. A very mortal mistake. One day it'll do that. Then I'll cry. Back to basics. It's so frustrating. We take one four step we take one step forward and two steps back. King Lucian grabs you by the shoulders so that he pulls you close, forcing you to look at him. King will be saved, but doing so begins with our training. Trust me. You gaze deeply into his azure eyes. His presence soothes your quaking heart. So maybe just practice your aim for now. We'll do more later. Now then, I'm looking forward to getting out of here. Someone's excited about their new part-time job. Oh, please. I just want to see the look of their look on their face when they realize they're in the presence of someone with divine skill. He heads to the door, then turns to the flourish and points at you. Good luck! And remember, strictly no opening portals to the underworld. You raise both hands in defense of the angel's piercing glare. I won't, I swear. What? Then why are they trying to find keys if Kobu can just open a portal to the underworld? Did they forget about that? Or are they too focused? Are they too... Or is Lucian too focused on trying to get Kobu pregnant? Wait, what? Ah, fuck. I knocked my microphone stand. I won't, I swear. Good. Then I'll see you later. Lucian leaves the apartment. <laughs> oh my god, you don't know. You don't know. Hold on, let me pull this shit up. Let me pull this shit up. I'm pulling this shit up. Give me a minute. I have to find it first. Uh, This PC. T7. Games. Uh, Where the demon lurks. Where the demon lurks. Yeah, yeah. Hang on, I'm I'm turning on I'm doing the display capture thing. Right here. My screen. This fucking scene is fucking glorious. I want to have a baby. That's great, he's going to be the mother. You. It's canon. It's canon now. Just kidding. Probably. Lucien leaves the apartment. You head to your kitchen to prepare a cup of instant noodles and pour yourself some orange juice. Your breakfast is hard to swallow with your mind lost in thought about what is keeping your portal powers from working properly. Looking at the palm of your right hand, magic sparks around it. In all the excitement of gaining back a fragment of your power, you didn't notice it's how your magic is different. Water. Wilder and raw. It's time to drink Akin water. to the days you began your training to be demon lord. It's time to drink water. It's time Ask to drink the devs. Water. You down the rest of your breakfast and clear the table. As you stand in the middle of your apartment unit, you try to recall what you can remember about portals. You're brought back to a time that happened all too often. A time where you put off studying for an important exam. In an instant, it was a portal exam conducted by Vendrake. Ew. 
You cursed the time you ignored your studies to play that game starring a pair of funny-talking skeletons named after bad typefaces. He's talking about Undertale! The test was due in two days, and you had yet to master constructing portal to, portals to locations you've never been to and was desperate for a cheat sheet. There you were, searching through your father's desk, hoping for a training video, a stack of notes, or some magic teaching tool to help you out. You were so engrossed in your search that you didn't notice a portal opening from across the room. Where is it? He has to- ah! Chains wrapped around your body before flinging you across the room. You land... You land right in front of a portal where you see a towering f figure standing in front of it. You squint your eyes and realize that the familiar silhouette belongs to your father. Uh, hi, Pa, I... You feel the tip of his blade on your throat before you could utter another word. What are you doing? Hang on. What are you doing here, son? The deep, soul-piercing voice of Demon Lord Zangrix chills you to the bone. His striking blood-red fur fills the air with the scent of cinnamon. Tall as Fortis and the build of a seasoned warrior that never misses a day of training, your father carries with him a presence that chokes one as hard as his chains. Odd streaks of gray fur run in between the sanguine mane. Quite the oddity for a demon who is also young by underworld standards. Um... I was just looking for some notes on summoning portals. You know, for Vendrake's test. Oh! His chains released you immediately and his sword dem dematerialized. In a swift motion, he gently lifted your chin up to see if he made any cuts. You could have just asked me at home. You know I don't like it when anyone sneaks around my office. Satisfied, he stopped checking your face. And when would that be? Somewhere between now and ever? Pa, you practically live in your office. Your father pulled his chair to him with the wave of his hand and sat down in front of his desk. Son, you know I wish I had more free time, but there's much left to build in the underworld. I know, Pa. I know. Deep down, you wish you could have chastised him for not trying to get a day off. He never knew how through your adolescence you wondered if your father hated you with how little you saw of him. So, no notes? They're all in here, son. He tapped the side of his head. Leaving information around allows your enemies to exploit it. Remember what happened to your grandpa? You killed him by exploiting plans that revealed a way through his stronghold. Exactly that. Out of options, you lowered your shoulders and looked to the side. Damn, so what now? Should I ask Amari for help again? Remember your father watching you intently. Guess I'll head home then. He held out his hand to stop you. Hang on, hang on. My meeting with R&D is on hold. The mortals have developed a new career around showing the internet their daily reactions and activities. The research demons are still going through more videos to understand it, so we have some time. Why don't I show you the secret behind opening portals? I mean, yeah, sure, Pa. You remembered how warm your chest felt when he said that. Zangrix stood up and drew his sword. I found that the quickest way to unlock a difficult school skill is to enter a near-death situation. Whoa, whoa, Pa. Don't worry, I said near-death. Pa? No. Come on, I don't need to be nearly dead to open a portal. Just give me some tips on how to go to a place I haven't been before. You young demons these days can't handle a little physical challenge, but all right. He holstered, he holstered his sword, but his words stung just as much as the blade that was pressed against your throat. How much do you know about portals? Mm, I know there's a spell that requires, I know it's a spell that requires soul energy to cast. If we've been to a place before, it's etched into our souls. No matter how we remember the place, a uh, spell knows where that point was, and we can easily open that portal. Yes, you're on track. But I don't get what Vendrick meant about opening a portal somewhere you've never been. He just went... Tried to imitate Vendrick's skating speech. Command the universe to open the portal to where you want to go! Ah, my fledgling lord! If Fortis can understand this, why can't you? Then I go, Well, Fortis can't touch his toes because his chest is too big. Then he would pull a lever and I drop into a pit where I got where I got to escape the other hell beasts. <laughs> your father blinked. For the first time you saw him visibly surprised. I will have to remember to review your curriculum one day. For now, follow my instructions. You start by feeling the veil that holds reality. Feel the veil of reality. What's that? You'll sense it when you focus on it. You held out your right hand, soul energy course through your arm. Steady your mind. Think of what you know about the place you want to go, what you intend to do, who you want to see. I don't know if it's going to be the right place. Will it to be? Tell the universes where you want to go! Hi, universe. Could you open a portal to Super Tomato for me? Not like that. Spiritually, son! Will it with your soul! You returned your concentration back to your hand. 
Soul energy flowed into your fingertips as you raised your arm. With steady breath, you summoned your memories of the shop, descriptions of Super Tomato from the magazine you read. Your dreams of going there to see the newest console released. Palm of your hand met the gentle touch of an invisible wall, a sensation akin to running your hand through hundreds of cotton strings. As though responding to your wishes, the threads wrapped around your digits. You felt confidence swelling up inside. This was the connection to where you needed to go. With a strong grip, you ripped apart the threads of reality, calling forth your portal. Did... did I do it? You did it! You summon a portal while thinking of the same shop from your memory. Peeking into the portal, you see you're not anywhere near the shop, but at the edge of town. Weird, I was sure that would have worked. Could there be a distance limit to my current powers? You slump to the floor with a painted sigh. With a pained sigh. Your thoughts of muddling between the failure with the portal and the memories of your father. Pa. He followed you to Super Tomato that day. It was at the time the largest game store in Japan. You remember how you had a blast going there even with your pa just watching by your side. How you both promised to spend more time together, but it never happened. He was bedridden and died in a year's time. Can't stop now. As you get up to try again, you hope that Lucien is having more luck than you. Inside Six Fan, the shop is still getting ready and has yet to open its doors to its customers. Good morning, Lucien. I'm so glad you made it in early. Lucien flicks the front of his hair. But of course, I'm a professional. And Neil's on the way over. Why not try changing into this? She hands Lucien a set of waiter's clothes. Let me know if there are any fitting issues and I'll have them fitted in a jiff, fixed in a jiffy. Of course, Cora. <gasps> oh my god! He's even prettier! My heart! Cora squeals with delight upon seeing Lucian. It fits you perfectly! Yes, but is the bow tie necessary? I had to keep my collar. I had to keep my collar away just to make it fit. Consider yourself lucky we're letting you wear those bracelets. It's a cafe, not a bank. You're just, you're just asking to get mugged with all that gold. Lucian raises an eyebrow with the petite man. The jet black fur and the lingering smell of burnt food gives the impression that the angel is looking at a dog who got set on fire moments before. Nail bean ass, we need Lucian's charm for the big event. Where are my eyebrows? Gone with the wind. Lucian, this is Nail, our head chef. Your only chef, mind you. He stuck with me. He stuck with me for over two years, which I do appreciate considering how little I pay him. Neil's long ears flick about, but his expression remains indifferent. As long as I've got a roof over my head, it's enough for now. It's my pleasure to meet you, Neil. That's chef to you. Ugh, mortals in the titles. Not going to mean much when you're six feet hunter like the rest of them, tough guy. Dog bumps into Lucian's shoulder and walks off to the employee break room. He's charming. Lucian says flatly, Neil's a good soul, I'm sure you boys get along. She smiles at him, although Lucian is not convinced. He holds his tongue. Now, before I send you off on your first task, you should take a look at our cafe's binder. It has all our menu items in the presses. She holds out a cream-colored file. Lucian takes it from her and starts flipping through. As a waiter, it's good to know about the ingredients we use in our dishes. Now we know what to recommend to customers who have dietary restrictions. Mm -hmm. Kale. Nuts. Take your time, there's a bunch of stuff in there, including how to set up the tables, emergent... Done. Eh, uh, uh-huh. I finished reading and memorizing this file. Cora holds a hand to her heart, clearly shocked by the angel's de declaration. That's impossible, it took- I took weeks to write all that down. I know you kids these days are getting smarter, but in less than a minute? If you don't believe it, test me. Aha, uh -huh, I will! She takes the file from him, flipping to a random page. She looks at the page and then at the dog. What makes our mac and cheese so special? Hot sauce to really give the dish a special kick. Correct. What if I was a customer who wanted to order our nuttiest experience cookie? But I am definitely allergic to peanuts. The cafe offers a sub and sunflower seed substitute called the Almost Nut Experience. That is correct. Huh. She turns to the kitchen area. Hey, Neil! Looks like we have another wonderkind like you. Uh-huh. I wonder what kind of trouble he's going to be. He doesn't look up from the kitchen window as he continues to set up his station. Almost not. <laughs> Excellent. Since you're all set up, let me just update you on your schedule and the new event we're going to run. She does a quick little jog on, this, jog on the spot as she smiles bubbly. From her pocket, she pulls out two pieces of paper for Lucian. You only need me every other day. Right, I wish I could offer you more shifts, but it's out of the budget for now, so I pick the days we really need the extra hand, especially with the new event. 
fine by me. I have other work to attend to as well. So this actually suits me. He flips to the second paper and furrows his brow. A bright blue flyer promoting the event Royal Dining Tea Time. Want to be treated like royalty? Come experience the special tea time event coming this week. What do you think? I got the idea from all these new themed restaurants popping up all over the world. I figured you and I can charm hundreds of customers to come have tea here. No offense. I understand I have a certain natural magnetism, but I worry if that's enough to bring in that many customers. That's why I've got me! She winks at Lucian. I've been known to turn a few heads when I was in my youth, and I dare say I still catch the eyes of many of the older folks here in Cableton. I can see you're quite passionate about your business. Let me guess. You hope to become a billionaire and on the cover of every travel magazine. Wow, now that would be exciting. Really, I'm just hoping to own the second floor of the shop. Just the second floor? Don't you want more for your life? All the other more people I have met dream of dreamt of greater things, no offense. None taken. Well, honey, I'm no spring chicken anymore. I think wanting to run a moderately successful business is a big accomplishment. I suppose it is not my place to measure the scale of your ambition. I'll do what I can as per my role in your establishment, so says I, Lucian. Now that's the real treatment we're looking for. You can stop by going around town and hanging out flash for today. Be back by sundown so you can help out with the evening rush. Come again, aren't I needed here? Well, the event is going to start till Saturday. That's four more days from now. We need to get the word out first. She whips out her phone. Now, ta I've tackled the social media side by messaging all my contacts from the local farmers association, my Thursday night book club, and I'm in the middle of posting about this event and all the food review sites our cafe is in. I mean, this feels like grunt work. I really think my skills are better suited for the task. I could do so much. I. Cor holds Lucian by the sides of his face and brings his eyes to meet hers. Lucian. There are no jobs that aren't important here. We all contribute a little something to the bigger picture. I picked this job for you because I believe you can do it. Lucian whines little- Oh god, trauma! Trauma. He's, he's probably having a trauma. Come on, who's a good new waiter? I am. Who's going to be the star of the cafe when the customers come in? I am. Then who's going to try to bring those customers in today and let them have the privilege to see you in action? I am. Yeah, now get out there. Yeah! Come to our event. <laughs> That is just foul. Yeah! <laughs> that is foul. That is just foul. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that is just foul. Come to our event. Lucien was given a stack of 100 flyers. In a matter of minutes, the hype of being hit... Being given his newfound responsibility dies away. As he stands outside the shop, Lucian thinks back about this, thinks back about the state of the mission and what he's doing right now. New event coming. Years of angelic training, and this is what I'm reduced to. Please take a flyer. All those hours of the lectures and errors and bows, cramming the history of creation just to do the Hi! Come to our new tea event. It will be a blast. Bruh, that was painful to watch. Kobu! Where did you come from? Did you manage to portal here? Arms on your hips, you puff out your chest and smile. I kinda just don't check the alley behind Six Man. There may or may not be an indent of meat on the ground. It was hard at first, and the closest I got was just a few feet above the alley behind the shop. You shrug. Part of me wants to give up, but I'm hopeful. I think I might regain my skill with more practice. Good. We can't really expect you to get the hang of everything in one day. Any other developments with your portals? Sort of, it'd be easier if I show you. There's something weird I noticed. When I try to open a portal beyond the town, it always stops at the edge of it. Like, consistently, it was always open on the same spot, unlike the random locations I get within Kibbleton. A boundary. I wonder if it has a connection with my flight being dampened as well. More importantly, I came to check in on you, which I'm glad I did, because... What was that just now? You're scowling one second and giving your best crocodile smile the next. Crocodile smile? A fake smile. The angel reels back, surprised that you were watching him so closely. I won't make any excuse. My attitude is less than acceptable by up above standards. It's just... 
This is very much just a repeat of my time in Up Above. Why am I always stuck with menial jobs? Is there something about me that just screams I can't handle things? He put a hand on Lucien's shoulder, look into his eyes, and smile. Maybe. But you've got to remember, this isn't Up Above. You're not working for some score, you're working for minimum wage. Which is debatable, depending on the state or country you're in. Regardless, you point to the sky in an exaggerated manner. In the spirit of the minimum wage worker... You've got to at least look like you give a give a damn until your paycheck comes. Lucian stares at you, dumbfounded. I think working on Earth has rotted your brain. You think? Either way, shape up. Core's a nice lady. Won't be fair to her when she took a chance on you. Yes, I suppose that's true. Anyways, I'm heading to the park to see what dirt I can dig up on those cultists. Can't keep sitting and waiting for something to happen. And then I'm coming with you. Aren't you on the clock? I am, but as long as I keep heading out flies, I'm not shirking on my responsibilities. All right, let's go. Lucian takes the charge and leads the way, stopping every few seconds to hand out a flyer. You offer to help, but he swats your hand away and glares at you. Hey, don't you want to get it done faster? Ah, 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 this is my work. I must earn my keeps as the phrase goes. They're so bad at giving pep talks. Upon entering an alley overlooking the park, you hide behind a telephone pole next to Lucian. From here you can see the park's entrance where several cultists gather. I see four of them at the gate. There's actually five. What? Where? Lucian points to the far right. A lone cultist stands away from the rest of the group. Their attention is transfixed by the morning glories that grow along the metal fence that separates the park from the rest of the town. Something about the way they cup their hands makes them seem so much smaller than they are. Hmm, I suppose one of us just needs to approach and talk to them, but who should we ask? I suggest we target the one on their own. Are you sure? However, they might not know much if they're avoiding the other cultists. I think otherwise. Let me try to talk to them. If I'm wrong, then we can get another shot to the rest. He drops a stack of flyers in your arms and walks over. You're caught by surprise and struggle to keep the papers from falling. Excuse me? Before you can walk over, you pull him back by the shoulder. Hang on, hang on. One hand, you adjust the front of Lucian's hair and straighten his bow tie. There, go get him, tiger. For the record, I could have done that myself. The angel walks off to the lone cultist. He leans in a bit before getting their attention. Hello. The cultist turns and nearly jumps from being spoken to. Hello. Up close, Lucian realizes the person is a female wolf. Her green eyes draw him in. Despite their luster, her eyes, ap her eyes appear her eyes appear vacant. I think that's a typo. Like her mind is very far away. Lucian puts on his warmest smile. I've noticed you and your people around the town, and I must say, you've caught my eye. Oh, um... Thanks. She remains distant, even with her reply. Lucian's smile for a moment falters. A bath of unfamiliar emotions swirl within, worry and fear. At the same time, one of the four cultists, a male white wolf, notices Lucian's presence and stumbles over. Hello, good sir. Have you come to receive and bask in the love of the great teacher? The fur on Lucian's back stands on end as he is overcome with disdain of the other cultist. He reeks of desperation and a lingering sadness that just puts the angel off. Just like the female, this one's eyes convey a certain fogginess in the person's soul. Why, yes, I was n I'm interested in knowing more about your group. I was hoping this young lady could assist me. Oh, pish posh, I can tell you everything you want to know about the Dawn Seekers. I don't doubt that, but I want to hear it from her if you don't mind. The male cultist shoots a glare at the other wolf, wolf as though telling her not to mess up. Very well, I'll leave you in the capable hands of our sister, Steve. <laughs> what? What? Steve! <laughs> I love that this game knows when not to take itself seriously. I love it. <laughs> air fryer, we're in this... You know what? Fuck the job. We're in this for the air fryer. V Don't forget, every new membership comes with a free air fryer. <laughs> I'm here for the air fryer. <laughs> this game is so fucking silly. <laughs> After the male wolf retreats back into the group, Lucien speaks. Steve, huh? We're all called Steve. The great teacher gave us that name when we became coat-wearing members. It's to show that we're all equal under his eyes. We're one big family. They're all named Steve. <laughs> do, 
They all worship the great Steve in the sky. Is that, is that God's real name? Steve. <laughs> It's time to drink water. <coughs> it's time to drink water. It's time to drink water. This is it's certainly this is not water. the worst cult. This is the greatest cult in existence. Sweat trickles down Lucian's back. The unease with him in swells. The way she speaks of, with such adoration, how she gives her name up so willingly. He can only describe this burning sensation in his heart as fury. Lucian looks to the group, then back at her. He bites his lips. Oh, I'm just getting some space because I wanted to look at these flowers. It's not like I'm being excluded or anything. She turns to the point. She turns to point at the purple flowers behind her. They remind me of the ones back home in Singapore. You're thousands of kilometers away from home, then. Why come all the way here? That's. Why did I come here? The angel sees a spark of light returning to her eyes. His smile widens, but only a bit before continuing. Yes, go on. What was the reason that you joined? I I had. I have a little brother, I remember. She grips the side of her hoodie. Prometheus came to the coffee shop I worked in and told me about the accident that would have killed my brother that night if he followed his friend's car home from tuition. Yes, you have a brother. And? I'm going to show the both of them the morning glories turn slightly towards the angels, drawn in by the energy he radiates. She takes a deep breath before continuing to speak. It's the reason why I or any of us joined to save someone we care about. The great teacher has amazing powers. He can guide our loved ones away from death. He's the reason my little brother is still alive. In doubt, the angel's smile drops. Like a switch in her brain is turned on, she succumbs to the fog in her mind and begins to praise their leader once more. It was so surreal. He knew everything from the model of that friend's car to the time of the incident. How could I not join after all that? He promised me if I joined, I could protect my whole family if I wanted it. Lucian's heart turns cold and Oh my god, it's the fucking anime thing. Lucian's heart turns cold at that moment. A sort of emptiness burrows deep within him, as though the person in front of him is a lost cause. Then came a memory, an image of Kobu. It was of the day he came to the angel, desperate to save his friend, with any angel or demon would easily disregard his soul for any other. The angel's thoughts lead back to the souls and up above, how, he, how the plans they had made for their personal paradise held so many names of people who weren't with them there. An act he found most peculiar as, why would anyone in heaven want to care about those who can't get in? If these mortals, even in death, they seem to think about one another. Does someone value her out there? Epiphany strikes. And are they protected, your little brother and your family? I, I don't know, I last contacted them when... When did I call them? What of their names? What of yours? My brother was... Roger. I'm Alice. <laughs> I nearly forgot my own name. Strange. Alice clutches the side of her head as though the memories are actively hurting her. My parents. The angel has deduced a chink in the colt's armor, or at least one in this individual. Just as Lucian is about to ask more, the previous cultist returns. Hello, Steve! I couldn't help but notice you look so stressed. Is something wrong? Lucian's eyes widen. If she tells him what he's been asking, they may cut him off from all information. No, it's nothing. We were just talking. Yeah, she was just saying how great your teacher is. That's great! I can go on and on about how amazing Lord Prometheus is. Won't you join us for a daily worship session of a great teacher? Perhaps some other time, though I am interested in your leader. I wish so much to see them in person. Well, there is a big event coming up, and I cannot say when or where. It's exclusive to our members. A big event, you say? Yes, Lord Prometheus will address all of us that night. He says there is a big plan for all of us. That is why we are here spreading his glory to those we find worthy. You can't see, but I am dancing every single time he speaks. Like, every single syllable he says, I'm dancing. Do reconsider. I'm sure my friend and I would love to stop on by. Oh, no, no, I can't. It's happening at the base of the hill where the end hotel sits. You can't miss it if you're heading there. Midnight on Friday. Now, why did she do that? The annoying one's face darkens. Steve, how could you? This is unbecoming of a dawn seeker. I, I am so sorry, Steve. I don't feel so good. My head hurts. May the great teacher have forgiveness in my soul. 
You could get us into a lot of trouble for that. Sir, please forget what Steve said. It was nothing important. The annoyed Steve grabs her by the arm and drags her back to the rest of the group. You're going to drink your fruit juice and reflect on your actions in prayer. Really, now, you're always causing so much trouble. I'm sorry, fruit juice? I'm sorry? Annoying Steve biting the curb 4K Ultra HD. Lucian's hand seemingly acts on its own as he reaches out as though to try to save Alice, but they move too quickly. Lucian molds over his feelings as thoughts and thoughts as he returns to your side. From where you stand, you see Lucian coming over. He turns ever so often to look at the cultist he was talking to. How'd it go? As expected, they're located at the base of a hill heading towards the end hotel. There's supposed to be a big announcement in four days by the leader Prometheus. So the big boss is already here, but they're laying low. Do we need to worry about him? We don't have to if we are successful in our mission. We destroy their data and their source of power, and they will fade away. Hopefully. Anyways, this is good. We only ever needed the location of their base. Let's head back and play in the next phase. Hold on, about that girl. Don't you think we should help her? You mean the one you talked to? You cast a side eye at the angel. Why the sudden concern? I'm not concerned. Last thing I need to be is indebted to a mortal. She blurted out the location at the last second. I suspect it was intentional. You cross your arms with a sly smile. Aw, you're growing a heart. Lucian rolls his eyes. That said, I don't think we should get involved any further. King's our priority. Excuse me? You're the one who's been insisting that I be nicer to their kind. Nice doesn't mean we need to steer the lives of everyone that comes our way. You're still an angel. Don't forget, you can't influence them until the rating of their soul changes. Do you honestly believe that embargo is necessary? You've literally, if you've literally affected King by being here with him for two years. I did not. Really? He raises his eyebrows at you. I mean, I couldn't have. Lucian leans closer, his eyes fixed upon you. I refuse to accept it. I didn't break that embargo, because if I did, that means I have a lot to answer for when his time of judgment comes. I didn't think I would choose anything he didn't want to. Maybe that one time when I asked him to buy that new game, but my point still stands. Oh, all right. Now kiss. You want to do this so badly? Fine. It's your job on the line. You needn't worry about my career. We aren't going to make that mortal change or anything. She will decide on her own. How exactly? Lucian holds out his right hand. I challenge you to an old-fashioned devil and angel on the shoulder. That old ritual? That hasn't been done in ages. So? That's what our kind did before the age of automobiles. It's what we do to test a soul, and they won't even remember it. We won't even be affecting the mortal soul rating. They will decide on their own which path to take. You realize if you lose, she might make a choice that will lead her into the hands of my company. That is for her to decide. I just wish for her to consider all her choices. You chuckle. Alright, but I won't pull any punches just because we're friends. Grab his hand. Blue and golden sparks fly between you, signifying the start of the ritual. I'd be insulted if you did. Now let's just... Now let's set the stage for our dear mortal. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, no, they, they're they just cock-blocking us at this point. But granted, it is, an, it is an SFW visual novel. I get it. Revealing our organization secrets to an outsider. Your actions could have doomed us all. We have procedures for letting new people in. I just thought maybe if he saw what we were all about, he could he would join us. What a foolish thought, typical of a rank one member. Just for that, you can walk back to base. Be glad I'm keeping this under wraps from the others. I'm sorry, Steve. Downtrodden, Alice walks slowly. She keeps her head low as she ponders her earlier actions. Why did I tell him that? I... Huh? What? Where am I? Maniacal laughter erupts from up above. She glances up, but there's nobody there. What's going on? Who, who are you? Alice turns to run out of the alley. Being immortal, she doesn't see the portal you set up blocking her exit, so she's teleported back to where she started. Am I going crazy? Lord Prometheus, someone, please help! She falls to her knees, clutching her hands in prayer. Time to make your entrance. Pathetic mortal, you will... Hang on. Pathetic mortal, you will escape to be quite a... <clears throat> you accidentally step on a bottle on the floor, falling backwards. What the hell? What's that doing here? Freaking recycling people. Thankfully, it's so dark in the alley she doesn't see you. You know what? Forget the theatrics. Let's talk, Alice. You, you know my name? 
I'm doing all this, why? Simple, Alice, because I'm a demon and we have something very important to discuss. You let out the same shrill laugh. The girl is taken aback, hugging herself for security. Little did she know that you actually know next to nothing else about her. Damn it, Lucian, this isn't fair. You kept all her private info o to yourself. How am I supposed to do my thing? Cease your wickedness, foul creature. Your kind will not have your way with her soul. Leaping off a nearby roof, Lucian spreads his wings and descends down as his halo blankets the alley in warm light. Its magic forms a protective dome, ensuring no prying eyes would be suspicious of what's happening. As he lands, you notice the angel is holding his flyers like a saint with holy scriptures in one arm. God damn it, Lucian! This guy... Wait, I know you! You're the guy from before! Yes, I am an angel, and I'm here to guide you away from... that. He points at you. No harm will come to you while I'm here, but that demon is unfortunately right, Alice. You are at an important crossroad, and you need to make a decision. What decision? I think you know what it is. To stay or leave the cult. Alice gasps. I... then what's the point of discussing it? Why would I need to consider any other option than yours, Mr. Guardian Angel? That's the most logical choice. I don't want my soul to be condemned forever! The ritual has begun, for those of the underworld know that the true nature of a soul is revealed in its most difficult moments. You must choose arguments to sway the cultist's resolve. Damn it, I don't know anything about them. I, I'll have to think on the fly. Talk about the illusion of logic or talk about sexy demons. God damn it! Wait, there's sexy demons? Are there sexy men demons? Because if so, then I'm, I'm choosing Kobu. <laughs> Just automatically. <laughs> Save, then try both. Huh? You know what? No, no. Don't talk about any of those. Talk about the air fryer. I am curious if Kobu can win. Alright. We're gonna try the sexy demons first. You can take that angel for his word, but is all that all... Is that all that really matters? This choice isn't about logic. It's about which of us has a sexier task force. And there's nothing sexier than spending an eternity with demons, baby! Lucian smacks himself in the face. You ever seen a demon with a ten-pack? Uh, no. But not that I ever wanted to. Well, we got them all. That's why the yearly, fi that's why the yearly firefighter demon calendars are the most sought-after items by demons and angels. What's a little torture compared to all of that? I don't want a demon calendar! I want to get my brother safe! That's why I joined in the first place! You say you're doing this for your family, then think of them. Would they be happy knowing that you've been reduced to by these cultists? I don't know, but that's better than knowing my brother could die at any moment. All mortals die. That's a fact of life. You cannot run away from such an inevitability. It doesn't have to be. Prometheus is giving us a chance. If I do what he says, then my family can live to forever. What family? Look around. Who's here for you? Wrong button. Prometheus is there. I know he is. He wouldn't just abandon me. Lucian grits his teeth. Sees visages of the same devotion he and the other's angels pledged to God, but dismisses this thought before it affects the ritual. If your cult leader truly cares about you, they would let you live your life. Talk about taxes or talk about the meaninglessness of life. Oh my god. Already we're going strong. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. That was that was beautiful. That was that was that was beautiful. Yeah, we we ought to talk about taxes. Wrong button. I keep hitting the wrong button. Well, Mr. Angel here thinks life is so great, but you know it isn't all that it's cracked up to be. Think about what you're going to lose. Free room and board, all the friends you could need, and most importantly, no taxes. Uh, I mean, think, I mean, think about it. 
What does living even mean when you have to pay so many taxes? <laughs> they'll tax you for your door. They'll tax you for the road you use. Soon they'll tax you for the anime figurines you buy. Um, I think they already do that. And uh, technically that sounds more like a problem with your elected officials than about life. Life is a cer- Oh, fuck. Wrong button. Life is a circle, an endless repetition of work and having your competition take it away. Work hard and live a better life, my ass. You work harder and the taxes keep growing. It sounds like you're being punished just for working. Not to mention the continuing rising cost of living. <sighs> Who's going to worry about going to the underworld when it's already hell on Earth? How much longer until I am finally free? You have afflicted yourself with disillusionment. <laughs> <laughs> she remains silent. Lucian frowns behind her. He grips his collar tightly. It's not too late, Alice. Think back to your family. Think about what you've missed being away from them. She turns to Lucian with teary eyes. I can't. I don't want to. It hurts too much. How old would your brother be by now? Thirteen. He would have started secondary school. God, I've missed his graduation. I missed his and my parents' birthdays. I miss so much. What else do you miss? I miss my bed. I miss eating food that didn't taste so crunchy and air fried. I miss actually doing things I cared about. Not all this stupid recruitment or tending to some stupid farm. Most of all, I miss my name. I miss being Alice. Her steps are slow and cautious, but she, approaches, but she approaches Lucian. I'm a fool, aren't I? I'm just lying to myself that I'm helping my brother by being here when I haven't even seen him or my family since. It's been years. I don't even know if he's around anymore. I just kept hoping that I was doing the right thing, but I'm just so scared. That, that all of us could have been for nothing. She stops right in front of him, the tears now flowing down her cheeks. The angel opens his arms. His wings wrap around her as she pulls her into a hug. Alice cries into his chest. It's not for nothing. You did it for love, and no one can fault you for it. Nothing else is said as her cries fill the air. After about an hour, Alice manages to pull herself together. I need to leave Kibbleton. Where to? Back home, maybe. I want to make up for the time I missed with my brother. So you're going to give up on Prometheus' promise of immortality? I've been with the Dawn Seekers long enough. I don't think he ever intended to keep that promise. I feel like they're up to something strange. We all came here without any warning or reason. Only Prometheus knows. You'd best leave too. I can't. I have a job to do. More souls to save? Perhaps. Then you're going to need this. She disrobes and holds the Colt's hoodie out to Lucian. That might be quite handy. Ah, well, I'll also be trading my air fryer in for some cash. At least enough to get me to the next town. I'll do you one better. The dog hands her a large sum of money. Wow, this could be enough to afford a trip back to Singapore. And a hot meal along the way. I've learned that food is important for mortals. Alice smiles. Thank you, Mr. Guardian Angel. I'll never forget this. She leaves the alley, unbeknownst that she will suddenly forget meeting the affable angel and the depressed demon. Such are the terms of the ritual. Lucian claims his landside victory. I do say that went very well. Sadness. <laughs> Emptiness. <laughs> Meaninglessness. Are you really still down after that spiel? Which, I must say, you are gasping at, you are grasping at strolls. Paying taxes. <laughs> Low pay. Small apartment! Lucian sighs. He crouches down to meet your face. Thank you. I know you didn't want to do it, and I didn't really have and you didn't really have to, but I'm glad you gave me a chance. You look up at your companion's faces, gentle smile inspiring some relief from your thoughts. That was a mess, to be perfectly honest. That was my first time. Your face burns red with embarrassment. The dog's ears twitch and his tail wags. It was my first time, too, and I'm glad it was with you. You lower your gaze. M me too? Me too! The both of you turn away slightly from each other. So, do I need to expect more sudden acts of grace in the future? 
I don't know what you're talking about. Sure, Mr. Guardian Angel, sure. I guess I should be getting back. I want to waste the rest of my time before my shift. Understood, and I'll return to distributing the rest of these flyers. I'll come by to pick you up for more training in the morning. Right, see you then. You open a portal and leave. Though your range is short, getting back to your apartment is made easy with multiple consecutive portal openings. The night passes by without much activity. You use the time to ponder your next move. Four days to the big announcement. Just what could it be? It would be a bad idea for them to to wait for them to strike on the day itself. If I was a cult leader, I'd increase security for the event. That would mean the best time to break in is any time before then. Their forces will be busy preparing and may not notice us coming in. Although it's possible the complete opposite happens. Man, if this were a video game, I'd know I'd know the end of the countdown means the moon is going to crash into the town or something. Majora's Mask reference! Just how much do I need to be worried about this cult? You ruminate further in, as the night processes. As the night progresses. Come the end of your shift, it's 7 in the morning. You step outside and meet Lucy, and seems like he's been waiting. Hey, been waiting long? And no more than usual. Take my hand and flying us somewhere before the town fully awakens. Where to? I found a decent training space. You sure don't waste time. Our foes won't give us time to prepare and recuperate. You'll have to get used to it. Now let's go and I'll tell you about what I've been thinking of during work. You take Angel's hands and you both jettison into the sky. In just minutes, you arrive at an alley right next to your apartment. Lucian tosses Halo into the air. The speech scrambling function activates, creating a dome around the both of you. The Angel stands across from you, his usual gravitas replaced by stiff movements and a steely gaze. I can tell you've given some thought about your next course of action. What well, gave it away? You're a lot less chatty when you're serious about something. Have you considered when we should infiltrate the cult? I did. I even asked Anna to fill in for my shift. I just need to tell her when. Lucian nods. I've flown over the location of their headquarters. I tried locating the position of the magical artifacts our group is said to have, but the Halo didn't even register the existence of the cultists walking about there. That area is guarded against magical interference from the outside. You get what I mean? We all have to go in on foot and find the place on our own. Exactly, and I can't let you get hurt, Kobu. You're asking me to stay behind? Where did this come from? It's my very job to keep you safe until you return to the underworld. Nothing new. We work better together. It's not a decision I make lightly, but of course I had already anticipated your reaction. Then let your training begin. If you can land a hit on me, then I'll have no qualms with you coming along. Set your backpack aside. One hit? What, too worried I'll mess up your hair? No, I just have a shift tomorrow. I'd rather not keep this going all the way until then. Then let me end this now! Cast a portal and rush through it opens right behind Lucian. The angel steps aside and trips you over. Ah! He grabs your foot and dangles the rest of your body inches off the ground. Good attempt. Announcing your strike and announcing your attack. Not so clever, though. You twist your body and throw a punch, but keeps you away before he drops you. Ah! Pain surges through your back. Your eyes widen as you catch the angel summoning his bow and arrow. Just as he fires the shot, you open a portal beneath you and you're back on your feet across from him. The arrow sticks into the wall before disappearing. What the? Are you trying to kill me? Your enemies aren't going to show you any leeway. Lucian aims his bow at you. When arrow forms, he draws the string back to its furthest, and a volley of arrows fly out like a blast from a machine gun. You summon a portal once more to catch the shots. The exit portal appears above Lucian. The angel le instantly leaps back, narrowly dodging the arrows. A plume of dust erupts from where they land. I need more speed. You rush forward through the dust, not giving the angel a chance to gather his bearings. Lucian raises his arms, ready to guard your incoming punch. No, he sees all the moves I'll make before I can land them. In the midst of thought and action, the world around you seems to stand still when an idea sparks to life. You summon a portal no bigger than a sauce than a plate saucer right where your punch would land. Lucian's head turns to the right where the exit portal appears. His left guard falls as he anticipates an attack from the right. Got you! Your punch breaks through the portal as you unsummon it. What? The angel instinctively grabs you by the collar and you grab his. He, however, fails to account for your weight. His center of gravity shifts and you both take a tumble. On the ground, you begin to toss and turn for dominance. Get off me! No you! He starts slapping the angel relentlessly. No! Stop! Stop it! He blocks your slaps with one hand, but because you aren't letting go of his shirt, he is being vigorously shaken at the same time. Not until I- You throw him roughly to the left and leap up over his body. Wait a minute, let me just- the sound of your slap announces your victory. You throw both hands into the air, panting heavily. Lucian lies beneath you, also breathing hard. The two of you exchange smiles between ragged breaths. Beads of sweat drip down your forehead. Your whole body's all heated up from the mock fight. His eyes seem to shine as he smiles with his tongue out.
Okay, did they fight or did they fuck? Because I don't know. We're gonna stop it for the ad. Wanna break from the ads? Hold the fuck up. Hold the fuck up. I can't believe I'm Googling this. I... I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty sure they I'm pretty sure they only fought. But I don't know given the end reaction. It's genuinely hilarious. Forget I said anything. Her heart pounds in your ear and you lean in close. What are you guys doing? Huh? You both look up to see Toast staring dumbfounded at both of you. Toast? The ghost? Why are you here? Hold up, what in Lady Liberty's green dress were you two doing? Jeez, get a room next time. Even Ghost is confused! What? We were just sparring. What did you- You and Lucian turned to one another, realizing that the halo has been active the entire time. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> you and Lucian turned to one another, realizing that the halo has been active the entire time. That ain't what I saw. What Toast saw. <laughs> <laughs> two, the two danced merrily in the back alley without a care in the world. Lucian, we must stop. What if my evil twin brother, twice removed, found finds out about us? Lucian spins you on the spot. Ho ho ho, my little chubby angel. You know, you know on the dance floor there is no Lucian. Only Leopard Kiss Me Off. Oh, Leopard Kiss Me Off, you are my rock. And you are the spring in my step when I do the cha cha cha. How your hips don't lie. You want me, do you not? Language! You slapped Lucian as he dips you and pulls you back up. Shut up and kiss me! I love you, Kobu. Oh, yes, kiss me off. <laughs> His hips do not lie. It was an illusion we were doing no such thing. A complete fallacy. Nothing happened. Angels cooked that one up. Pure fiction. Uh-huh. Yeah, we were just tossing each other around, bashing bodies and getting dirty on the ground. Like normal people. More importantly, why are you here, ghost? Uh, me? Well, I came for Kobo. I could use some help beating up those cultists for stealing my friend. Cultists? You mean the Dawn Seekers? They'll be hospital seekers soon! Come on, partner, let's thrash them! I've seen them scrambling at the park. Now, what exactly did they take from your friend? The jacket! It's like his prized possession! Promise Darchon to get it back to him. You have a friend here in the world of the living? Yeah, first guy who could ever see me when I came over. We've been traveling together ever since, looking for his jacket. That's why I ended up here in the first place. You tap Lucien on the shoulder. Maybe he can help us out, we're going there anyway. If you want someone who can float around fancifully, a balloon would be better. Wouldn't he be able to help us look around undetected? They may have magical artifacts, but the cultists are mortals who can't see our magic or the supernatural. Lucien takes a deep breath. You have a point. Very well, Ghost. You do our bidding, and I'll consider looking away from your existence for now. However, if you so much as think about betraying us, I will make you rue your afterlife. I don't know Ro is. Is it tasty? What? Not Ro! Are. You. E. Well, rue you too, buddy! Guys, come on, let's run over the plan of my apartment. We're heading in tonight. Sweet! Tonight? Are you sure? Yes, now come on. Saves me the trouble of trying to fill my shift. No! No more Lucian! 
The world is too dark. The world is dark. Nothing is worth it. Nothing is worth it anymore. I'LL NEVER KNOW JOY AGAIN! Anyways. Hang on. Yes, skip the credits. Why is this game making me feel emptier than Arches did? Like, Arch... Arches made me feel empty, but this Lucian's root made me feel emptier. We're doing toast next. Anyways, stay safe, have a good night, try not to cry yourself to sleep, and I will see you all tomorrow.